hard to know. Can you hear me through this, all right? Yeah. I'm used to being loud and obnoxious. Um, there's, there's not a real lot I can say here. What we, we've covered so many grounds tonight. We started off covering the democracy. And you know it's interesting. Um, democracy is meant to be about the free will and the formed electorate. So what you're meant to do is have the free freedom of choice when you vote, and you're meant to have access to an informed decision, to make an informed decision. And what that, what that means is that you're meant to know what I stand for, you're meant to know what the other candidates stand for, you're meant to be able to go out and freely choose. Now, we have an electoral system that's written by the two parties. It's called two party preferred. That system that frowns upon people like me, that system is frowned upon Pauline. That system is frowned upon a lot of people because what happens is this. If you don't like me and I speak tonight to you from the heart and you think, I don't want that man representing me, it doesn't matter because you have to prefer me when you vote. Okay? And that's unacceptable. We all know that. And if I'm a two-party candidate, the way the counting goes is that your vote most probably is going to end up in my back pocket. So democracy fails from the onset when we can't cast a free and informed vote. All right? And that is a very important thing. So when you talk to your friends, you've got to let them know that if we want change in this country, we have to change how we vote. If we vote the same way, we are not going to get a different outcome. It's as simple as that. And when we start talking about farms, and when we start talking about the things that Flag are representing, and Peter here is a fantastic man, I've dealt with him for a long time, is I've gone out, and I've gone out as a single guy, you know, as a person that's not elected and tried to make a difference. And when, at first, when I first started getting concerned, I went up to a river area, and Peter will know some of these things, and I went up and met with uh, uh, Oakville. Oakville's one of our biggest potato growers, and they were being sold to Chinese. And how I found out about this was I was in the pub having a beer, and they said, I said, that's ridiculous, why would we be doing that? Why would we sell that farm? The Chinese don't want to farm potatoes. And the guys in the pub said, come for a drive with us. And what they had done is the Chinese had come over to South Australia, this is last year, and they actually hired a bus. And then they hired a huge houseboat, and they went down our river, and they looked for the biggest pump stations. Because they weren't interested in the bloody land, they want to buy our water. And our water and our land is our future, as you know. And they went out to Oakville and told Oakville outright, can you divide the property up into three sections? And Oakville said to them, well, why do we need to do that? No one's going to have a look at it. It's under $360 million. No one cares, but they said, just in case anyone does notice. All right? So they went out of their way to make sure you didn't know it gets sold. And they're out there today, right now, and they're out there last month and the month before buying our land. Okay? And when I was debating this with Nick Champion from the Labor Party, he said to me, it's okay, Mark, there's not much been sold. And I said, well, you bastards wouldn't have a bloody clue. You're not taking any notice of what's being sold, who's buying or how much it's going for. And he said, this is his reply, it doesn't matter, they can't take the land with them. But they can take the bloody crops with them to feed their own countries. And this is where the Labor and Liberal Party stand. They actually don't care. If you vote Labor and Liberal, any of your friends vote Labor and Liberal primary, there's a primary preference. You are supporting the sale of our lands, our farms, our infrastructure and our water. So you have to go away today and vote in a formal manner. I know people here will do that. But you have to tell your friends. Do you want your farms? Do you want your land? Do you want your water sold? Do you want your children's future sold? Because if you do, vote Labor and Liberal. Because if you don't, give someone else a chance. fails, which is the cornerstone of our society, when democracy tells you you must vote a certain way, and when the major parties can't read democracy well enough and they start dressing up as other po political parties, Family First copped that in the state election, if you remember, dressed up as another party, gave out dodgy how to vote cards. They give out, when you get your postal application, that address on there that says Postal Counting Centre is the Labor Party head office. It's not the AEC. That is dodgy bloody practices. Who in the hell in this country rewards people that will do dodgy practices with their vote? Remind your friends of these things. You don't dress up as another party. Don't give out dodgy how-to-vote cards. In the state election in 2010, 
77,000 names went missing off the election roll. 26,000 ballot papers went missing that Labor won by 1,200 votes. Now, that is not democracy. So it's not just the system that's failing us, it's the people failing us. And when we all hear the sooks and complaints about no one's buying Australia, small business are closing, farmers are closing, it's not the politicians to blame, it's us. Because when you go and buy something, right, you have to ask, is it Australian? That's all you've got to do. If it's a couple of dollars more, do you want to save two bucks and see a farmer go for land? No, you damn well don't. And it's, ch it's past time that the, not just that we vote in an informed manner, but that we actually have the balls and the guts to stand up for what's important in our country. And that is things like our farms. And we can stop that. We can fix that because we can ask, is it Australian? We can make sure when we spend our money, it goes into the back pocket of Australia. If you go to the fish and chip shop and you're buying fish and you say, I want, which, is this fish Australian? And you buy the Australian fish, what fish will they start putting in that shop for sale? Sorry, <laughs> um, So there's so much capability to us, but we like to sook and say it's the politicians' fault. They don't care about us because they, don't, they have so much power of a democratic system, they have the media in their back pocket, there's 5,000 posters out there on the way home with colourful pictures of them. If you go to the media and pick it up, who's going to win? You know, is it going to be Abbott, is it going to be Rudd? You never hear about the candidates in your area. The system is too party preferred. We have to smash that. If we want to change this world, we have to smash that. And the only way we can do it is to change how we vote. The only way we can empower our farmers and our producers is to buy Australian. Okay? Those are the things that are important. That's what we have to change. And it's very important. And I'll tell you, it is not going to be easy. Um, as Peter knows, I opened farm direct markets. I thought, I went and saw some farmers one day and I said, what can we do for you? And they said, well, we need to get money for our produce. We, we, Woolies and Coles are smashing us. And uh, most of us are going great. I said, well, okay. Um, let's have a bit of a rally and get people down to buy Australian. And I had all the farmers coming down and I, I hired the land next to Woolies head office in South Australia. Which I thought was, uh, and uh, we brought all the farmers down, half of them didn't turn up. And I rang them up and said, what happened? They were warned that the local Vietnamese, particularly growers, were warned if they turned up, they will never sell their produce in this state again through either the wholesaler or the retailer. And uh, I was disgraced, so I thought, bugger you guys. So I hired a car park, if anyone remembers this, and I opened farm direct markets. And the council came in and said, uh, we need to read about the whole entire area for you to use this empty car park. $10,000. So we started moving the market on a weekly basis, which was hard to hard <laughs> So then I went down to the Parafield Airport and I said, well, this is, Con this is Commonwealth land. Um, state government can get stuff, uh, local council can get stuff, so we opened it there. And it's now one of the biggest markets in the state. Interestingly enough, new. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, they wrote some new federal legislation three months ago and threw that at me. And uh, so now we have to comply with full redevelopment of the farm direct markets, uh, which we will do. And uh, just to piss them off, I'm now taking over four other areas of Adelaide with council approval. And as soon as we pass the federal laws, there'll be eight farm direct markets, and any farm in this state can really come down to the parade and sell their produce direct to the people. Now, if I can get up my ass and do that, we can all do the same thing, so do the best you can. You shut up, Sean. Thank you.